This story happened when I was 12 years old. It was summertime and temperatures quite often reached up to and slightly over 120 degrees outside. Needless to say I spent a considerable amount of time indoors, enjoying a comfortably controlled climate, away from school. My mother worked during the daytime for the majority of that summer. Consequently, I spent most of it alone, playing pogs, masturbating to the Mexican TV station, and sorting my Marvel Masterpiece cards alphabetically. A few weeks into my vacation and the calls began. The phone would ring around noon. The first few times I answered with a standard, hello, received no response and simply hung up. After two or three of these incidents I began answering all noontime calls in silence, slowly cupping my hand over the receiver, just listening. Silence. Just, nothing. I would hang up after a few seconds. The frequency of these calls began to increase as did their regularity. Two weeks later almost every afternoon I'd either ignore the ringing phone, or quietly pick up and listen. My mute answering tactic was partly psychological, partly investigatory, in an act of defiance I met this caller's silence with silence of my own, while attempting to gather any kind of auditory cues as to who this could possibly be. On rare occasions I could make out some background noise, the sound of a TV or even a quick bit of muffled breathing, but mostly just silence. At this time cell phones were the size of shoeboxes and extremely rare. I'd seen a photograph of one only once or twice before. It was years before caller ID, asterisk 69, feature on phones which would call back the last number you got a call from, so I had no resources to aid me in identifying who this was. I became convinced it must be a bored classmate cooped up inside their house, trying to entertain themselves by prank calling me, however the consistency of the calls began to push this into a new unsettling territory beyond conventional types of prank behavior, as five or six weeks had passed since the first few calls, and they were an absolute daily occurrence at this point. Creepy as this situation was, I never felt the need to mention it to my mother, neighborhood friends, or anybody else for that matter. There was nothing to say simply because nothing was being said, and this was also my opportunity to play the role of the protagonist in a sort of makeshift pre-teen whodunit, just what I needed to spice up a boring summer. Still, slight anticipatory pangs of anxiety began to set in every afternoon knowing the ring which would always come, followed by unsettling silence or stifled breath. I had begun to get very frustrated and this led to anger. It was bizarre. Why would this person call around the same time every single day and never say anything? I couldn't understand their motivation and it had gone on too long now. It wasn't funny. Sometimes I would pick up, stand and listen for three or four minutes in complete silence before hanging up, and it would always be me who disconnected first. If I didn't answer, they would continue to call back until I did. When I finally did, they wouldn't call back. Until the next afternoon of course. So after almost seven weeks of this, I answered the afternoon call with a moment of silence and then burst into a rage. I began insulting the caller, asking, what the hell is wrong with you? As I continued on my tirade I glanced at the clock. It was exactly 12.15 so I finished with something along the lines of, it's 12.15 in the afternoon on a Saturday in the middle of summer and you seriously have nothing better to do than this? You have no friends. You have no life, you're a loser. Goodbye asshole. After I'd hung up the telephone I became aware that my body was shaking. My adrenaline was pumping. I hadn't planned that, but I just didn't know what else to do. I had to try something. I was fed up with this situation, and I just let it out. It kind of felt good, and surprisingly nobody called the following afternoon. The next few days there were no calls either. In fact, from that point on the calls had stopped completely. I was shocked. I had shamed them into leaving me alone. I still speculated as to who it was or could be, and part of me regretted not cracking the case but my relief outweighed my curiosity. A few more days passed. No calls. I tried not to think about it too much and enjoyed the remaining couple weeks of my summer vacation. School started up again. 
After a few weeks of good old-fashioned homework, bullying, and camouflaging my spontaneous erections in class, the whole creepy collar thing pretty much seemed relatively unimportant. I had a few thoughts now and then as to which kid it might have been, but it was complete speculation. I had never even heard the caller's voice or really gathered any kind of clues as to who it might be so I let it go. Seven or eight weeks into the school year, I woke up early on a Saturday morning, proceeded to eat copious amounts of breakfast cereal, watch cartoons, then went outside to play, as the now bearable weather afforded me the opportunity to do so. Around noon I came inside to eat a snack. I still remember this moment fairly vividly. I sat at the counter in the kitchen where the phone was plugged into the wall, eating some kind of snack while my mother was washing a few dishes in the sink. The phone rang. Her hands were soapy, I was near the phone so I answered. I picked up the phone with a loud, hello. There were a couple seconds of silence and then an adolescent male's voice announced, Hey. It's me, your summer buddy. 12.15, remember. I looked at the clock and it was exactly 12.15. I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't say anything. I looked at my mother. She seemed to be oblivious to the fact that the phone even rang, as she looked intently down at the dishes she was now rinsing. I quickly hung up the phone. Hello, I just discovered this channel a few days ago and decided to share my own story. This happened last summer and started pretty much a year ago. I am a guy who spends quite a lot of time in front of my computer, probably too much, and my room back at my parents' place has a window facing the road in front of the house. My computer is located next to the window and when I'm sitting by it I have that window to my right side. This means that if someone walks past the house, they can see me by the computer and I often tend to look out the window whenever I see someone walking past in the corner of my eye. No big deal. So this all started when I noticed this woman, somewhere in her twenties, maybe early thirties, walking by quite often. As in five to ten times every day. No big deal of course, she probably just lives nearby I thought, which I later found she did. This woman had a very uncomfortable look to her. It didn't look like she had a shower in a while and she had this extreme smile on her face, constantly as if someone had stapled her face into that expression. I didn't think much about it until I noticed that she started trying to make eye contact with me. Since she walked by my window so often, I often caught her in the corner of my eye and unintentionally looked at her. Every time she got eye contact she would start giggling slash laughing uncontrollably. This went on for a week or two. I just thought she was mentally ill or something, and didn't think much about it. Then one day, she walked past an insane amount of times, as in 15 to 20 times in a couple of hours and each time she was constantly looking into my window when walking by. This is when I started getting uncomfortable. After unintentionally getting eye contact again I quickly turn my eyes to the computer again only to see in the corner of my eye that she has stopped, standing outside my window and looking right at me, laughing uncontrollably with her creepy smile on her face. I quickly pull the curtains and try to ignore it when I hear the doorbell. I open the door and there she is. I'm alone at home and starting to get some serious creeps. I was at the time babysitting my friend's poodle and pick it up to use it as some kind of protection, stupid, I know. I say, hi. And she responds with a very, very happy, hello. She then says, now it's your turn. I have no idea what she wants and only respond with, okay. She then starts laughing, a lot, as if she just heard the best joke of her entire life. I start panicking and shut the door after quickly telling her to leave. I tell my parents when they come home and it turns out that this woman is an old student of my mother. She says that she is mentally ill and that I shouldn't worry. She is nice. Her visits outside my window continue every day and I tell my parents again that I feel uncomfortable. They then try to talk to her, to see what's up. My mom asks her why she does it and she tells her that she and I have some kind of supernatural connection in our heads and that she and I have conversations with each other through some kind of telepathic way. We are made for each other, 
and madly in love. That's when my parents are getting concerned. Her visits continued on a daily basis and we visited the police to see what could be done. Their answer is that we can't do nothing because of stupid laws in my country. She often rang my doorbell but I had the sense not to answer. I noticed that as time went on, she got worse and worse mentally. She started to show aggressive behavior against my parents when they asked her to leave. I have actually never seen my dad so uncomfortable and overprotective as he was at this time, he was worried as well. One day something happened that was enough for me. It was Friday night and I was home alone. I was watching TV and heard strange noises from the street. I peeked out the window and there she was, outside my window dancing, screaming, singing and doing all kinds of strange things. I put all the lights out in my house and pretended not to be home, but I could still hear her. She was outside still. My neighbors ended up calling me several times, asking if I was okay and I said I was, but I wasn't, I was scared. My parents were hours from coming home and all I did was watch TV, pretending not to be home. She stayed for an hour or two before leaving and the week after, me and my parents decided to take action. We visited different mental hospitals, or whatever you call them, in my county and tried to tell them what happened, but there was one problem, they didn't have her as a patient and couldn't help us. Neither could the police. To make the rest of the story short, it has been way too long already, this continued for the entire summer and towards the end, she would often spy on our house, playing some sick game with a child she had started hanging out with. At this point, she was scared of us because she knew we had contacted the police and different doctors and they were shouting things such as, you see that house, watch out for them or they will call the police, run, and she, and the child, would run and come back minutes later, repeating the same thing. The police have visited our block several times, hunting her when she is clearly out of control. There are so many incidents I can tell you about this story, but it would take way too long to tell everything. I don't live at that house anymore and I haven't been bothered by her since, except the time she tried to contact me on Facebook, but she was blocked instantly. That was the worst summer of my life. Long Time Lurker first time sending in my story, all that jazz. While I was a witness to a number of events with the individual in question, I would like to note that the majority of the unsettling behavior and stalking was directed to my co-worker and friend at the time, Caroline. She and I became close friends during the summer in question and while we have since gone our separate ways, we do keep in contact every now and then and after reading several posts on this sub, I asked if I could share the experience. She agreed, but out of respect to her, and to protect both of our anonymity, I will leave out some more direct details. Having witnessed the behavior firsthand on many occasions, I understand her hesitation and her terror. So on to it, this is going to be rather in depth since there were several encounters over the summer. It was a few years ago now, I lived in a medium-sized college town and worked at a nearby grocery store. It was small and had been in the community for years, so there were a lot of regulars. Some important backstory with the area, while the town was removed in a sense from the major city, there was a bus line that went directly from the larger city to this town and it just so happened to drop off right by our store. As it goes with some public transit, especially in this area, there were several homeless and transient people that got off the stop and would come to the first place with food and drink and a place to wait our store. I have had several creepy encounters with this place and may post some later. I worked at this store for almost a year and a half as a cashier then was promoted to supervisor. Caroline had been working there for several years before me, but we were about the same age, I am a male in my mid-twenties now. Caroline is a very attractive, friendly, and vivacious woman. She was a pleasure to work with and is a good friend. But she also attracted a lot of unwanted and unwarranted attention, especially during night shifts. Caroline has a good head on her shoulders and is an expert at dealing with the creeps and the leering jackasses. This guy he was a whole other story. It started in late June. I had come onto a shift, I usually worked closing shifts because of school schedule, 
and during a tag-up meeting with the morning supervisor, Megan, I was informed to make sure I hid the break schedule. Our store was small and yet still incredibly busy with the college and the local community so we had to balance schedules and breaks and tasks really well and things could change at a moment. We had a clipboard with the people on the front end for the day, and the estimated break schedule. It also had their in and out time. Supervisors were often also on registers and not just hanging out in the office so we were at ground zero as it were when things got crazy. I asked Megan why I had to hide it and she informed me that some guy had been hanging around and she had caught him twice leaning over the register to look at the schedule. Our store had a big cafe in the front, so it wasn't uncommon for people to linger, sometimes hours at a time. This was especially true for the homeless who had nowhere else to go. As long as they weren't causing trouble, we had no reason to kick them out. Anyway, as the night progressed, I noticed this lanky dude with incredibly thick and greasy hair sort of wandering around. He would walk up and down the aisles, then go to the cafe with nothing and sit and stare at the registers, then mosey on outside to the outside tables then repeat. After about two hours of this, I approached and asked if I could help. Expecting him to say no and to scarp her off, I was taken aback when he moved extremely close to me and asked, is Caroline working today? Per our policy, and I believe in some places, the law, we do not divulge schedules. I would usually answer if they were currently there, as sometimes we would work directly with vendors and had meetings. This guy was clearly not that and I had already had a handful of people want to specifically stand at Caroline's line and chat with her, leer at her, and prevent her from working. She was usually good about giving codes when a habitual creeper came in and I would give her a task to go in the back room and count inventory. I was on edge with this dude so I told him I could not divulge that information. He looked ready to spit on me, he was also a good six inches taller than me, though I could probably take him if push came to shove. But he left. I told Caroline about it later and though she didn't say anything, I could tell something about this one that set her off. She was quiet the rest of the night. Cut to about two weeks later. We're doing late night inventory so we're working way past closing time at 11 p.m. I have myself and two other relatively newbies working with me. There were other people from other departments doing inventory, but the bulk of it was on us. At around 1 a.m., while we are neck deep in counting, the store phone starts to ring. And ring. And ring. Normally, we wouldn't answer but I guess store management did and that was that. About five minutes later it rings again. Someone else answers. Then again. I didn't think much of it until it rang a fourth time and I picked up. I answered to say that it was past our operating hours and to try again in the morning. There was heavy breathing on the other line, and when I said hello, this raspy voice that was super familiar asked if Caroline was working. I said it was past hours and was about to hang up when he shouted. Tell me when Caroline works next, or I'm going to come down there and slice your fucking throat, asshole. Needless to say that pushed a line. I had no idea this was the same dude but I got a familiar chill. I immediately hung up, told management and we proceeded to call the cops. We had to do this a lot when drunk homeless people would wander in and steal or get violent, seriously, I have so many creepy encounters, but I feel they aren't right for this sub. We knew the local cop, Jim, would help so we had him come by and do a few patrols. That was about it. About an hour and a half later as we were wrapping up, the creepy dude is at the door, banging all unholy on the door screaming at us to let him in. There were about five other people near the door, all burly men and they chased him off. I called Jim and he said he would do another sweep. I told him the guy had come in earlier that month asking for the same girl. Of course after that, we made some changes. Caroline was notified. I may have had issues with some of the store management, but they were really good about keeping us safe. She requested day shifts only, which we tried to accommodate as best we could, but I didn't write the schedule and our direct team manager had the propensity to be an ass and would sometimes schedule people when they requested they couldn't work. 
She often paired me with Caroline since we were the fastest workers and could get the closing duties done early so they could save like 30 minutes on labor. Whatever. There were some other minor incidents I guess with him coming in, but he was quickly booted out by management. There was one incident where some dumbass on our team answered the phone and gave this dude Caroline's whole schedule for the week. We had been told not to tell the team why the guy was not allowed in, because it was private, but Caroline ended up telling them, much to the chagrin of our team manager, don't know why she was so pissed, Caroline was trying to get people to understand the gravity of the situation. When that happened he was there every day. I ended up trading some shifts with her as a cashier and not a supervisor, just so she could get some peace. After a few months of this guy really harassing her at work by lurking and waiting for her to get off, we all pitched in and walked her to her car or drove her home, or stayed with her until her boyfriend could come pick her up outside, it just kind of stopped. Really suddenly. Caroline didn't want to talk about it and I didn't press as even though we were close co-workers, it wasn't my business. So in about late August she's closing with me and we are having a good time as it was super slow that night. She offers to take care of some duties while I count drawers and close them out. A difficult and somewhat nerve-wracking process as I had to have the drawer of money out in plain view, the old store had really bad security in that manner, thank goodness we were never robbed when I was there. One of the seasoned cashiers stays on register to help any customers, while Caroline wipes down the cafe and does the normal closing duties. I to this day do not know what made me do what I did next, but I am partly glad I did, and partly terrified. Caroline was collecting the trash from around the front end and getting ready to take it out back. In the middle of the drawer being out with money ask you, I get this gut feeling something isn't right. I told her to stop, and that I would take the trash out. She gave me a weird look like I was saying she couldn't physically do it, which of course wasn't true. I just felt a sense of unease. She didn't complain, taking out the trash to the nasty dumpsters out back wasn't like a trip to Disney World after all. I threw the money back in the drawer and locked it, and grabbed the trash to take it out back while Caroline finished cleaning and Jesse was on the register. The alley where the trash went was pretty fucking awful. Smelled bad and despite our best efforts, was always messy. We shared it with a few other businesses and with the constant wave of homeless and transient, we had frequent dumpster divers. As I am walking down the loading ramp I hear some noises by the recycling dumpster, but I figured it was a raccoon or something as the alley ended near a big ditch slash ravine with a little creek. Raccoon City, really. As I am throwing away the trash, some figure darts out into the alley and blocks off the amber glow of the sodium lamp. I look up, startled. It's this dude. He was wearing a really large hoodie despite the warm weather, and had his hands tucked into the front pocket. His head was bowed slightly so he wasn't looking right at me but I knew instantly who it was. I will never forget that look of hunger and malice in his eyes. Like his obsession with Caroline had consumed every ounce of humanity in him and turned him sour. We hadn't had a problem in weeks and we were all under the impression he was gone, based on things Caroline had hinted at. This guy, saunters forward and asks if he can bum a cigarette. I don't smoke and clearly wouldn't do so on the job. Plus I had hands filled with dripping garbage bags. He knew I knew who he was so I don't know why he pretended to not know me. I told him he knew he was not wanted here and to leave, and that I was about to call the cops again. The movement towards me was so sudden, I barely had any time to react. Pouncing forward, hands jumped out of the pocket and onto my shoulders, pushing me against the wall. His next words were throaty and pained, almost as if he was crying in anger. Are you fucking Caroline? She's mine. Keep your fucking hands off my woman. I shouted out of fear and anger I guess and the store manager who was in the back room heard it and came running outside. Dude bolted like a bat out of hell, down the ravine, and into the creek where we think he waded through the big pipe down to where there was a small park he could hide out in. I was so terrified and damn near had a panic attack in the back room. The store manager called the cops and told Caroline what had happened. She broke down and was sobbing uncontrollably. 
I called her boyfriend, Ian, and asked him to come get her, that she was okay to leave for the rest of the night and didn't need to finish her shift. Jin came out, did a look but couldn't come up with anything. The store leadership talked to Caroline a few days later I guess but she didn't want to talk much about the guy. We all got the sense something was up. I filed a report but my boss, the crappy team manager, told me I shouldn't make another one and definitely shouldn't press charges because it could come back to bite them in the ass legally, whatever the hell she meant by that. Caroline quit soon after. I don't blame her, none of us did. Despite mine and a few other managers' best efforts, she wasn't feeling safe at work and kept insisting there was nothing we could do. I didn't see her for another seven months, as she disappeared pretty much off the face of the earth and online. I know this is getting super long, but there is one last thing that really nails how twisted this guy was. Eventually, while running errands in the city on my day off, I bumped into Ian while out shopping. I asked him how things were going as we had become rather friendly from the several times he came in to get Caroline. He said things had been better, and that Caroline was getting back to feeling safe. I didn't want to pry, but he let me in on what had been happening. Apparently the guy was an old friend of a friend of Caroline's. He had been at a party and met Caroline and had been really friendly, almost too much so. He friended her on Facebook and had kept rather quiet, messaging her here and there and wanting to chat. She made it clear she was dating someone and he seemed to ignore this and quickly got more aggressive in wanting to just hang out with her. Caroline didn't want to cause any problems with their mutual friend, so she didn't unfriend this guy but did do what she could to turn off chat so he couldn't bug her constantly. She tried to prevent him from contacting her without unfriending him, as she was sure this would really set him off. She, as I said, was very friendly and didn't want to cause any more problems. It didn't work. He had apparently kept sending her flowers and stuff to her house, calling from unregistered numbers, how he got her number, she still isn't sure, and sending almost half-hourly messages on Facebook. Then, he snapped. He went postal on her Facebook, tagging his name on pictures of any guy, including her boyfriend Ian, as himself. He would then post comments like, she and I are meant to be, give me the strength to kill him, in reference to some picture where she was kissing Ian, we will be together for eternity, etc. Really disturbing stuff. She blocked him. Her friend talked her out of getting a restraining order for a while, but she ended up getting one after he attacked me in the alley. And that's about it for this guy. I never saw him again after that night and I quit and moved out of the area a few months after Caroline did. Partly because I was disgusted with my team manager and her lackluster attitude towards the events, she laughed when I told her initially this dude came at me in the alley, and partly because I had had quite enough with crazy creepers. I visit that store now and then to see old friends and I hope I never see that disgusting guy ever again.